Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different one. I even debated covering this because it's a very traumatic and just sad situation that's happened, but considering I've moved a lot of my content to be centered around cartoons, I thought maybe I should pop in and just talk about it. Today we are going to be talking about the new Quiet On Set documentary that has been released about Nickelodeon. It features a lot of stories coming from ex-actors and employees and writers on the set, and of course, centers around the abuse of Dan Schneider. So here's a list of trigger warnings. Once again, this is going to be a much heavier video than my usual ones, but I felt like it was something to talk about because this is my childhood as well. So recently, if you know, there has been a documentary released called Quite On Set that goes and practically details every allegation and every bad thing that had happened on Nickelodeon. The whole reason I wanted to make this video is because I feel like most of us, considering most people who watch my channel are either a little bit younger than me or roughly about my age. I grew up in the early 2000s. I was a 2002 kid. We all grew up watching cartoons. It was a huge part of our childhood, especially Nickelodeon. And when I was a kid, I remember wanting to be a Disney star. I feel like every kid had that dream of wanting to be on either Disney, Nickelodeon, or whatnot. Child stars were just like so popular at that time and everyone wanted to do it and when i was a young kid i really thought that these kids had it all like they still had to do school but yet here they were pursuing their dreams of becoming actors and actresses and they're making tons of money and they're just like living the best celebrity life as a kid and especially now that i'm an adult i know that that's not true if anything it's far from it and I want to take a minute to just say that even if someone looks like they are having the time of their life, they're at the peak of their fame, they might not be having the best time. You know, you never know what someone is really experiencing off camera. And so I just want to take a second and say that no matter what someone looks like, whether they look super happy, like they've got their life together, looks like they're at the peak of their fame, you never know what someone is really dealing with off camera. So with that being said, I'm going to go and read a couple of the allegations and things that have been said throughout this documentary that has just changed my way of viewing child actors. So the first thing that we need to know is that Dan Schneider was first hired in Nickelodeon in the early 90s. So his abuse has been going on for roughly about 20 years. And if you're wondering who is Dan Schneider and you don't know anything about Nickelodeon, you don't know anything about this documentary, Dan Schneider was one of the employees and writers and honestly big shots to just dumb it down at Nickelodeon. He actually made a video that is on his YouTube channel and I don't know if it is still up there or not as of right now, talking about a disclaimer that someone made that something that he used to do was request massages, especially from female employees or female stars, which by the way, were mostly children. And he actually did come forward and say that this is something that he is acknowledging. He did ask these women to do this. Another thing that has came forward about him is that one, he would play suggestive or NSFW content on computers in the writer's room, which were mostly men because a lot of women have come out to actually talk about the way that he isolated them and made them feel like they were worthless. And one of the women who was on the team actually went and said, I am quitting because I am not going to go into a room full of men who don't like what I'm going to say from the get-go. And this woman actually went on to sue Dan Schneider. And for another part, there was another employee, I don't remember what his first name is, but it was Peck, who was actually pleaded in 2004 of performing lewd acts with a minor and there was actually a case file done about this situation. We never actually got to know who that child was, obviously for safety reasons, but now with this document, we know that it is in fact Drake Bell. And if you remember a few years back, Drake Bell, who was on the show Drake and Josh, was accused of exchanging calls and text messages that were not appropriate with a minor and this does not mean that he should be innocent or acquitted of that this is still a very bad thing that he did as a grown adult texting and communicating 
inappropriately with a minor but i feel like it starts to show just how bad some of these kids were groomed as a young child to so many young aspiring actors nickelodeon was a dream when in reality it was more of a hellish landscape for them because they were groomed and forced to do inappropriate acts out of fear that they would not be able to achieve their dreams if you disagreed or if you went against anything in the script you would honestly face being fired and to make matters worse, a lot of parents stayed out of these things. When they knew that something bad was happening to their child, they would stay out of it. They would turn the other eye and look the other direction because they didn't want to fear them coming forward and saying something about this awful situation that their kids are being put in out of fear that they would be taken off set and that that child would lose everything because of their parent. And I'm sure many of us know about the viral book of Jeanette McCurdy's I'm Glad My Mom Died, which details her life as a child star facing being a star with a very abusive mother. In her memoir, Jeanette McCurdy actually talks about all the abuse that her mom would do to her, such as calling her ugly, forcing her to do a very strict diet, being very demanding of her own child to make money. I just cannot imagine the pain that these stars as children had to go through living at home with parents who were abusive and turned blind eyes to the actual abuse that they are suffering at their job. And yeah, job. Because these are kids working, especially on television where people are always going to judge you because you are putting yourself out there for everyone to see. And another thing that I want to talk about in this document is it's actually made me, an adult, relive some of the episodes of shows that I've seen on Nickelodeon and go, wow, I never even thought of it this way because I was a kid. I remember being a kid watching certain episodes of like, for example, of iCarly, of Sam and Cat, and having like my mom, my grandma, grandpa come over and be like, uh, let's go to a different channel. And I would never understand why. And I was honestly upset because I'm like, this is like one of my favorite shows. Like, why are you making me watch something else? Like, what the heck? Now as an adult, going back and watching it, you realize just how weird some of these scenes are, especially some of the scenes featuring Ariana Grande and Sam and Cat, which is something that I just brought up because I never even understood these references. It went right over my head. For example, there is a scene in Sam and Cat where she is playing on her bed with a pickle. I think we can kind of understand where that's going. Sometimes there's small details, sometimes there's big things that are in episodes that make you uncomfortable as an adult watching these child shows, shows for children with children in them. It is inappropriate and should have never happened in the first place. If anything, I think the best thing about this documentary is just to showcase how dangerous it can be to put your child or as a child to put yourself in the entertainment industry. It is extremely abusive, not just to children, but to adults as well. I hope going forward that this document showcases just how badly children need to be protected in the entertainment industry. There was a scene in The Amanda Show that should have never happened, which was Amanda, a young minor, in a bathing suit with a fully clothed Dan Schneider. Does it seem necessarily weird as a kid? I don't think so, but as an adult, there is no reason for this grown man to be in a hot tub with a minor as she is wearing a bikini, especially regarding all of the allegations that this man has been through. A lot of the young child actors and even some of the older actors on certain Nickelodeon shows who are people of color have came forward about discrimination and being stereotyped. For example, there was a scene where they took a young black actor and made him kind of the stereotypical drug addict and drug seller when this was a kid selling cookies and candy in a skit. And another thing from this series is that actors Giovanni Samuels and Brian Christopher Hearn have both came out and said that they felt overlooked as POC actors on the set. 
Hearn even went forward to say that there was a scene where he was supposed to be a rapper character, which is a fetus. So his rapper name was Little Fetus, and he further goes along to state how, of course, this is a fetus, which, you know, when in the womb obviously is naked and so they wanted a bodysuit for this actor and someone on set had either made a joke or just a statement saying we should put you in a charcoal suit another very harmful thing that nickelodeon did was bringing adult type shows onto nickelodeon another really horrible thing that nickelodeon did is they took shows that are primarily for adults to be in. Adults have to sign waivers to be in some of these shows and took that and applied it to Nickelodeon, a child show. So what I'm talking about is shows like Scare Factor. If you don't know, Scare Factor was a show where they would take a bunch of adults who obviously were consenting and had to sign waivers in some case to do scary dangerous things. Like for example, having insects placed on their body or bathing in like urine or just really gross things like that and once again this was primarily for adults and yet someone on nickelodeon had the bright idea to take that and put it into a nickelodeon show where they basically subjugated a lot of children into doing things that are made for adults like having to sit in a pile of worms once again, in the document, a lot of children and actors come forward to say that, you know, it was horrible being in that situation because their friends were having to do things like, for example, there was a peanut butter challenge where they had to cover a child's entire body in peanut butter. And for any child, being that exposed on television in a bodysuit having peanut butter where a dog then comes and licks at you where you can't do anything is one, embarrassing, and two, just extremely awkward because this is a child. Many actors came forward to say that it was hard to watch their friends because they were friends on these casts, some of them at least, definitely had a hard time watching their friends go through these things because it was awkward and you just had to sit there, shut up, and watch it. And this is something that absolutely blew my mind covering this case is that one of the people that I actually mentioned before, Peck, Brian Peck, was connected to John Wayne Gacy, actually had a connection and almost a pen pal-esque relationship with the convicted serial killer John Wayne Gacy. I think this just goes to show how badly there needs to be more checks and regulations in the child actor industry. If we are going to continue putting children into the industry that is made and cultivated for adults, there needs to be more security. There needs to be more protection and more safety for these kids. There is so many more allegations and so many more things that I would like to talk about, but I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to link a couple of resources and a couple of videos that I have found that have really went in and explained more. And I really, really encourage you guys to go and watch this documentary. It really makes you question your entire childhood. Once again, with this going forward to end, I just want to say I hope that this document can serve as a way to help guide the industry to protect children and minors on set. If there was something I missed, or if you guys have something that you wanna talk about with your own experiences watching Nickelodeon, please let me know down below in the comments. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.